Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to make three shredded chicken recipes. I'm going to show you how to meal prep shredded chicken so you have it for all week long. When I meal prep, I don't necessarily like to make preset meals all packed away for the week because honestly by day four, they're usually not that great. What I like to do is make a few sauces and some shredded chicken or some kind of protein, and then I can turn it into meals very easily during the week. So we're gonna make some shredded chicken tacos. I use a corn tortilla with just a little bit of oil to make it soft and lots of veggies for a super healthy taco. We have our delicious shredded chicken wrap on a whole wheat wrap with some Zatar Greek yogurt to make it taste like it came from a restaurant. And we have our bakery style chicken salad. We've got walnuts, red onions, celery, apple, this is the kind of chicken salad sandwich that you will pay 12 or $13 for. You can make it for much less at home and it's definitely healthier. This chicken doesn't have any oil in it. It's just a really good lean protein base for anything that you wanna make during the week, especially after the holidays if you feel like you've been eating really heavy and you just wanna eat something that's simple, clean, but still delicious with a lot of flavor. One mistake a lot of people make when they try to eat healthy is that they just eat really boring food and that's usually why people stop trying to eat healthy. So you've gotta find recipes that are full of flavor that you love that you look forward to eating. So let me show you how I meal prep this chicken for all week long. I'm gonna show you two different ways to make shredded chicken. One is in the slow cooker, the other is in the instant pot. You can of course roast chicken, which is delicious, but this way of making chicken, it doesn't have any oil in it. So you can really turn it into anything. We just use a little bit of salt and pepper for seasoning and it keeps in the refrigerator for about four days. You can freeze shredded chicken, but it's pretty easy to make, so I like to just make it fresh. But I make it on Sunday, we'll have something that night with shredded chicken, and then I have chicken for the rest of the week to get me through for easy meal prep. We'll start with a slow cooker. You can cook any amount of chicken that you want, it's the exact same way. A pound of chicken is generally about four servings. So three to four ounces is about one serving. And oftentimes when you buy chicken in packages, it comes in about a pound to a pound and a half. So think about how much chicken you need for the week and how many people you're feeding, and you can go from there. So if you just want about four servings of chicken, make about a pound. If you need eight, make two pounds and just scale up from there. Into the slow cooker, we're just gonna put the chicken straight from the package. We don't need to do anything special. We don't need to cut it. Take it right out of the package. This is about a pound and a half of chicken. This is three chicken breasts. It just goes straight in. With chicken, when you touch it, obviously you need to wash your hands really well after you touch raw chicken, but you just wanna get the chicken into the slow cooker, super simple. Let me wash my hands really quickly and I'll show you what I do. Now, again, I don't need to cut this. I'm not gonna put any oil in it. And you actually don't need a lot of water. Sometimes people put too much water into the slow cooker when they're making chicken like this and you don't need it. So I'm just gonna really simply season this with some salt and pepper just enough to sprinkle on top of each of the chicken breasts. You can do this with chicken thighs as well. I like this just really lean protein to eat during the week, but whatever works for you. And then about a quarter of a teaspoon of salt per chicken breast. So generally you want a half a teaspoon of salt per pound of meat. All right, there we go. That is as simple as that. You can add this one ingredient. You can add some apple cider vinegar or even some just plain distilled vinegar. Not enough to flavor it, but in a slow cooker, it will help tenderize it just a little bit. So you would just put about a quarter of a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar or distilled white vinegar on top of each chicken breast. I do think this tenderizes it a little bit more, but if you don't have it or you skip it, it's not a big deal. And you don't wanna put so much on it that it flavors it. You don't want your chicken to taste like vinegar. Just a little bit on top of each chicken breast. And then one tablespoon of water per chicken breast. So that's about two tablespoons per pound. You really don't need a lot. Helps the slow cooker a little bit, but your chicken will give off water in a slow cooker. If you live in the desert in a really dry, arid climate, you can double that amount of water. But I live at sea level in Seattle. One tablespoon per chicken breast is great. So you'll just wanna put this on four hours on high or six hours on low. 
The second method is actually my favorite. I used to not like the Instant Pot, it's a pressure cooker, but the way it cooks chicken is actually great. Of course, I love a roasted chicken in the oven with crispy skin and oil, that's a great meal. For meal prep, the Instant Pot is the way to go, it's the fastest. I can have shredded chicken in about 30 minutes. You need to cook your chicken for 12 minutes on high in a pressure cooker, but it takes about 10 minutes to come up to temperature, so it's a really easy way to cook chicken in 30 minutes or less. In your Instant Pot, it came with this little wire rack. If you lost it, that's okay, but the chicken can stick to the bottom a little bit. So put your wire rack right in the bottom. And then the one thing about cooking in a pressure cooker is you need a cup of water in a pressure cooker for it to cook properly and come up to temperature. I'm not gonna use this water, it's not for the chicken. In the slow cooker I showed you, you just need a little bit of water. In an instant pot, you actually need one cup of water. It's not even really stock. There's no bones, there's no veggies, there's no nothing else in this. So this is not going to taste great. I get rid of the water afterwards. This just helps the chicken cook properly. And I'm intentionally not seasoning this with a lot of different things because I want to use this in different recipes throughout the week. So if you knew you were going to have just tacos with this, you could just put the taco seasoning right in. But I'm just going to do salt and pepper because I want to use this in different preparations during the week. And different than the slow cooker, you actually don't need to add any vinegar to this. The pressure cooking will make this actually quite tender. But again, I don't need to cut it. I don't need to do anything. Just take it right out of the package. This is just over a pound of chicken. Again, always wash your hands when you touch raw chicken. Just set it right in. And same thing, you can do this with chicken thighs. You can actually use bone-in chicken as well. I always cook it for 12 minutes. And if you're ever concerned about it, use a temperature probe when it comes out. You wanna cook chicken to at least 165 degrees Fahrenheit. So I've got my one cup of water, my chicken breasts, and again, I could scale this up. I could put more in here if I wanted to. Same amount of salt, about a quarter of a teaspoon per chicken breast, half a teaspoon per pound, and some pepper. This is so simple. If your chicken breasts are frozen, you wanna pressure cook it for 16 minutes. I find the texture not to be as great, so I don't love doing it with frozen chicken breasts, but if it's all you have and you're in a hurry, you can definitely do that. Now, the thing about a pressure cooker is when we turn it on, sings you a little song. You wanna make sure that your the top of your pressure cooker is set to ceiling. So always read the manual of your pressure cooker. Pressure cookers these days have become much safer than they used to be. The ones that used to be on the stove, I remember my grandmother had one of those old ones and we weren't even allowed in the kitchen when it was on because it had exploded a few times. These newer ones are very safe, these electric ones. So always read your manual and get to know your pressure cooker. Just make sure it's set to ceiling and then I'm gonna turn this on high pressure for 12 minutes. It's that easy. On my pressure cooker, I hit manual, and then I already have it for 12 minutes because I always cook chicken in this, but you would just do the plus or the minus forever, how much time you need. And then it will turn itself on. I've got it in the ceiling position. You'll know it's up to pressure because the little pin at the top will be raised and it will start counting down for me. And again, my pressure cooker takes about 10 minutes to come up to temperature, but we'll see this in a few minutes start to count down. All right, it's been four hours. It's been a few seconds for you, but four hours for me and this chicken looks perfect. There's just a little bit of liquid. If there's more than a few tablespoons of liquid, you might wanna drain some of it. This looks perfect. And I'm gonna show you my handy trick with the mixers. You can do this with two forks if you want and just shred it. That is a great, easy thing to do if that's what you have. If you have a lot of chicken or you wanna make really quick work of it, you can use a hand mixer. You just stick the hand mixer and keep it on low and just gently go over everything. You don't need to do it too much. Obviously, just tell it's nice and shredded, but look at this. This looks fantastic. All of this shredded chicken, lovely. You can turn this into any meal you want. Here's how my family uses this. Tonight, Sunday night, we're going to make some tacos. And then I'm going to put the rest in the refrigerator and we're gonna have chicken salad on Monday and Tuesday for lunch. And then with whatever I have left, I'm gonna turn it into some wraps the other days. When I meal prep, I don't like to do containers that have necessarily four days of the exact same meal. Honestly, by Thursday, I'm like, I don't know if I want that. It's not looking as appealing. So instead of preparing the exact meals, I just like to get ahead of making the chicken, I'll chop some veggies, keep everything in the fridge, and then it makes preparing food during the week really, really simple. Let your chicken come to room temperature, put it in a glass container with a lid, and you can store it in the refrigerator for four days. Let's start with some tacos. We love this any day of the week, but it's especially great on a Sunday because I can even prepare some of the extra fixings and then we can eat tacos tomorrow if we want to. So I'm gonna make a really quick pico de gallo. I'll just slice my tomatoes. 
You can buy pico or you can buy salsa, but oftentimes there's some preservatives added to it or other things. It's very easy to make yourself. Just slice up about a cup of grape tomatoes or cherry tomatoes or any fresh tomatoes, Roma tomatoes, any kind of tomatoes work. I like to slice them in half and then slice those halves in half into quarters. Makes a nice size for the tacos. And you can scale this up or down depending on how many you are serving. You want about, I would say, a cup of pico de gallo per four tacos. But things don't have to be exact here. This is a great way to get lots of fresh veggies into a meal that's not necessarily a salad. So pico de gallo is tomatoes, white onion, cilantro, lime juice, salt, and sometimes jalapenos. I'm gonna make this more kid-friendly, so I'm not gonna put the jalapenos in it, but if you have jalapenos or you like jalapenos, a little chopped raw jalapeno is nice as well, if you like it spicy. All right, that's good on my tomatoes. Then I just want some white onion. Raw white onion is great on tacos, even if you just did the raw onion, it's great. Some white onion, you wanna chop it pretty finely. You know, Maple's here, she thinks it's an apple. Sounds the same as an apple. All right, it goes right in. Then a handful of cilantro. If you don't like cilantro, leave it out. Just give it a rough chop. A Little bit of salt, it's about a quarter of a teaspoon. And then your lime. Get a little roll to make the juice come out easier. I'm gonna put the juice of one lime in here. And I'm gonna cut my other lime up so people can put it on top of their tacos for even more if they want. This is a good amount of lime juice though. Very easy, just mix that up. This is a great little topping for your tacos. The lime juice kind of tempers the onion, it makes it just a really nice fresh veggie topping for your tacos. All right, and then I just chop up some lettuce for those of the people who like the lettuce on their tacos. Just shred the lettuce with your knife, make it small, easy peasy. All right, let's heat up some corn tortillas. I put some cheese out for people who want that. We'll heat up some corn tortillas. The thing about a corn tortilla is it doesn't really have a lot of fat in it or any fat in it. So we've got to heat it with some oil on the stove top so they don't break. So I have these little corn tortillas. Let's heat them up. You do not need to dip them in oil. This is a healthy version of a taco. You can just use a spray of avocado oil. Avocado oil is a high heat oil. It's a healthy oil. Just use a spray of this in a skillet over medium high heat. Give both sides of the tortilla a very light spray and heat them up for about three minutes on both sides until they're nice and soft. You'll end up with these really soft, nice tacos that are not overly greasy, but that also won't break on you. When it's time to heat up your chicken, preheat a skillet over medium high heat. Add as much chicken as you want for your tacos. Again, you want about a quarter of a cup per taco. About a cup will make four tacos. And you'll just wanna put about a tablespoon of water per cup into the pan to allow the chicken to warm back up and then sprinkle the top with about a quarter of a teaspoon of ground cumin. Let that gently heat through. You might wanna reduce the heat to low. Let that gently heat through and you are ready to make your tacos. So I'll just add my chicken. Everyone likes their tacos a little different. And you can of course use any tortillas that you want. However you like your tacos, this chicken makes great filling for it. I'm going to use some of my fresh veggies here on a few of them. This is how I like my tacos, just with the pico de gallo on top. I also put out some cheese and lettuce because that's how the kids like their tacos. So depending on what you like for your family or whoever you're cooking for, you can make the tacos however it will suit you. You could turn this into taco bowls, burrito bowls. There's so many different options here. You don't even have to put the chicken back in the skillet with the water and the cumin. That's just one way to heat it back up. The chicken's great as is. On the ones that I'm not going to put the pico de gallo on, I'm gonna put some lime juice on the chicken. The other ones already have some lime juice and a little bit of cheese. This is more of a American style taco and the lettuce, really great tacos. Here's two different versions of tacos. Again, we like to do this on Sunday night and then I have my chicken for the rest of the week to make other recipes. So here's dinner tonight. I'll prepare my chicken salad tomorrow morning for lunch with the chicken. I don't like the way it sits in the refrigerator overnight with a dressing on it. And then I'll also show you how I prepare a really delicious wrap with some Greek yogurt and some veggies and the chicken to make a really healthy lunch. All right, my chicken is done. I've turned it off and you wanna always make sure your pressure cooker that the pin has dropped. So mine released most of its steam. I pushed the pin to venting and nothing came out of it. 
but depending on your pressure cooker, just make sure that the pin has dropped. And if you need to make the pin drop, push the vent over to venting. Be careful when you do that. And actually, if you end up needing to do that, I suggest that you do it with a wooden spoon. You would stand over here and push it to venting just because steam is gonna come out of that thing. You don't wanna be really close to it when steam comes out of it. So mine is done. Let's take a look. Lots of steam. Here's a fun trick a lot of people don't know. The instant pot lid is meant to sit if you need it. If you need some more to set, your lid is meant to sit on the side. All right, you wanna leave one or two tablespoons of water just to help make sure the chicken doesn't get dry. But other than that, you can just discard this water. And then you wanna get rid of the wire rack too, of course, because we're gonna shred it right in this pot. Of course, as always, this is hot, so be very careful. We're just going to shred this up. We'll do the same way I shredded from the slow cooker. You can use two forks or you can make quick work out of it with your mixer. I like this mixer because it has this silicone bottom on the mixers. Everything I use here, I link below for you in the description. So if you wanna take a look at this, you can get this one too. Let's just stick this in here. Again, do it on low. You don't wanna over mix it. We're not trying to puree it or pulverize it to the point that it's not appealing. Just, it's an easy way to shred it. Of course, normally I don't usually use the Instant Pot and the slow cooker, I wanted to show you both. So let me add this chicken to this bowl. This will keep for about four days in the refrigerator. So I'll use some tonight and the rest during the week. Let this cool off, this is steaming right now, let this come to room temperature. Put a lid on it and put it in your refrigerator. Next up, we're gonna make a wrap that tastes like one of those 12 or $15 wraps you get at a restaurant or at a store but for a much lower price, you can buy all of the ingredients and make five or six of those at home. Plus, you know what's going into your food. So I've got a whole wheat tortilla here. You can use any wrap you want. And I have some whole milk Greek yogurt. This is 5% fat Greek yogurt. I like the full fat Greek yogurt. You need some good fat in your diet. To this, I'm gonna add some za'atar. Za'atar is a blend of spices, mostly thyme and sesame seeds. Sometimes oregano and some other things are in it, but it makes a great mix in for your Greek yogurt. For a half a cup of Greek yogurt, you wanna put about a teaspoon of za'atar, half a teaspoon to a teaspoon. All za'atar blends are different, so you can kind of find one that you like. Mix that together and it just adds a really nice flavor. There's two sauces in this wrap and that's what makes it taste like it came from a cafe or a restaurant. So you'll spread some of that down on the bottom and then put some of your chicken right on top. And again, our chicken just has salt and pepper on it. So it's a really simple chicken. That's why we're adding two different sauces to this. And depending on what you wanna do for the week, you could mix up your yogurt with za'atar. This will keep for four days in the refrigerator. I don't like to pre-make all of my wraps because the wrap after two or three days in the fridge it's not gonna be great. I just like to have the sauces mixed up so I can put this together really, really quickly. If I've made my chicken, I've made my sauces, I'm good to go for the week. For the greens, I'm actually going to make a really quick vinaigrette. We'll do three tablespoons of olive oil. These little jars have a handy measuring on the side. Whoa, that's a lot. Three tablespoons of olive oil, a tablespoon of red wine vinegar. This is like a sweet red wine vinaigrette. It's really good. And then just a pinch of salt and pepper. It's like an eighth of a teaspoon. Again, I wanna make four of these this week, so I, don't, I just need about four tablespoons of dressing for the week. I don't need more than that. Some pepper in there. All right, and then a teaspoon of honey. You could also use white sugar if you prefer, but I like to use the honey. Having this little bit of a sweet vinaigrette on the greens inside of your wrap is the trick to making it taste like it came from a restaurant. So this is the quick and easy way. Shake it up. It's not a technical emulsion. It will separate, you're gonna to have to reshake it. It's just an easy way to make it really quickly. Here we go, there's our little vinaigrette. Take a handful of greens, just a small handful to fit on top. Put a little bit of your dressing on top, teaspoon to a tablespoon. Mix it with your hands, it's okay to get your hands dirty. You could do this in a bowl if you want to, I don't wanna get a bowl dirty. Mix this up with clean hands, put that right on top. If it looks like it's gonna be hard to eat, just chop them up a little bit. I should have done that before I put the dressing on, that's okay. And then I'm gonna slice up some tomatoes, cucumber, and red onion. This is a really easy way to eat healthy with delicious food. You're getting lots of veggies in. You don't have to eat boring salads to be healthy. Eat some really good food. There, I'm actually gonna use, you can use your knife. I'm gonna make quick work of my veggies with my mandolin slicer. I'm gonna set it on two. Be very careful with this. I've told you guys many times, I cut myself with one of these a long time ago. The veggies I would prepare depending on how many of these I wanna make. And I would just put these in a container in the refrigerator. 
Again, I'm not gonna prepare four wraps because in a few days, these aren't gonna be great. But everything will prepare individually really easily. And then you can just quickly put your meals together. Got those. I like this texture for my wrap. Could even slice these in half if you wanted to. All right, there we go. This is an amazing wrap. Let's see. Let's see if I can wrap it all together. <laughs> it's full. Here we go. All right, let's move on to our third recipe, our chicken salad. Let's make our third shredded chicken recipe. This is my favorite chicken salad with some apples and walnuts. It makes an awesome sandwich or you can put this on top of greens. We'll start with two tablespoons of mayonnaise. I'm using veganaise. I know this is not vegan, I just like the taste of it. You can use whatever your favorite mayonnaise is. You could also use Greek yogurt. Two tablespoons right in. And then about a teaspoon of lemon juice. Fresh lemon juice is not only very good for you with all the enzymes, it tastes delicious. Teaspoon of that. I'll save this for another recipe later in the week. Let me mix that up. This is a really simple base. Mix that up and do just a little bit of salt and pepper. Maybe a quarter of a teaspoon of salt and a little bit of pepper into the dressing. A lot of bakeries have a chicken salad like this. And again, you're gonna pay at least $10 for a sandwich like this where you can buy these ingredients, make it for much less, and you know it's in your food. All right, let's get an apple. This is a honey crisp. Cut the rest of this into slices just for snacking. I'm going to use my mandolin for this. If you don't have a mandolin, you can of course just use a sharp knife. This just makes a really nice texture to get everything the same. So I'm gonna set mine to two. These are great. I'll link to this in the description below and everything I use here, I'll link to these in the description. On two, let me just show you actually what these look like. So if you go on one, the setting for one, put your apple down, use your guard, have your mandolin down and go straight down. You're gonna get a really thin slice. It's almost too thin to slice this apple. On two, you're gonna get these really nice slices. And on three, they'll just be a little bit thicker. Use the guard. I've told you guys I cut myself pretty bad on one of these ones. They're a little bit thicker on three. So for this salad, I actually am gonna keep it on three. I'll put my apple down. These ones that are broken, little chef's treat. So this is to make two servings, two tablespoons of mayo, a teaspoon of lemon juice. I'm gonna use a cup of chicken and about a quarter of an apple. So I have my apple sliced thin and then I'll stack them up like this. And then I'll go straight down. This just makes a really nice texture in your salad. You have these kind of little matchsticks. Really nice little texture. So put those into the bowl. I'm also going to use this. I'm gonna put this back on two and use this to slice my celery. You do one rib of celery, one rib of celery, and I like to first cut it on a diagonal and then go straight in. As you start to get close to the end, keep your fingers back. And if you're not using the guard, don't try and get too close. Leave the last few inches if you're not using the guard. It's not worth cutting yourself. All right, that's about a quarter of a cup of celery or one celery rib right in. Same with the onion. I'm gonna cut the onion the same way I cut the apple. I really like the onion on the mandolin. And since I'm getting it out, I'll just do the rest of the veggies on it. This makes great slices. And then I'll just put these in a container and I can use them on salads or wraps or anything else this week. All right, it's about a quarter of a cup of red onions. And then I've got a quarter of a cup of walnuts. Almonds are good here. Sliced almonds or slivered almonds. These, some of these walnuts are still whole, so I'm just gonna give them a really quick chop. I just buy the walnut pieces. Walnuts are incredibly good for you. They're good for your brain health. They're full of healthy fats. Very good for you. About a quarter of a cup to a third of a cup of walnuts. Then let's add a cup of chicken. You can adjust all of these measurements to your taste, to however you like your chicken salad. This is gonna go back in the refrigerator for more recipes later this week. Let's mix this up. I almost forgot the raisins. We need a quarter of a cup of raisins. Currants are also nice, but just good old raisins. This is a classic chicken salad. The raisins that you keep around for snacks or for baking or for whatever you keep raisins around for. If you don't have apple, uh, grape is a good substitution, some sliced grapes. All right, this looks awesome. I have some whole grain bread. I like this nutty, seedy, grainy bread. It has a lot of fiber in it. Very healthy whole wheat bread. And this already has some mayo in it, so I'm not gonna put any down. If you feel like you need some more mayo, you can put some down. This is just a classic healthy chicken salad. What I like about recipes like this is that it's not boring. 
right? This is like a very healthy meal that is not boring. Sometimes when people try to eat healthy, they just start eating really plain, boring food, and that's why they don't stick with it. You've got to find recipes that you think are delicious, that you look forward to eating, that you love. This is one of them. I love this. There's a famous bakery that is in most cities that has a salad very similar to this, a chicken salad sandwich very similar to this. I think it tastes better when you make it at home, and it's definitely healthier. All right. Let's put the top on that. Again, I wouldn't prepare four of these because it's gonna get soggy in the refrigerator. But if you have this prepared, this will be great tomorrow. This is, with the mayo, I'd say good for about two or three days. Four days would be stretching it. Slice this open. Beautiful. This looks so good. All right, better try it. Make sure it's good. Mm. Perfect. Try it. Looks so good. Mmm, delicious. Very good. Perfect little taco. Mmm, this is so good and it's healthy and everything was prepared in advance. I've got my chicken, I've got my sauces made and now I can just throw it together in the morning or right before lunch. There you have it, three awesome shredded chicken meals. We made great, healthy shredded chicken tacos. We made a fantastic shredded chicken wrap with that Zatar Greek yogurt. And we made our chicken salad that is perfect for lunch any day of the week. If you like recipes like this, make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel to come back every week for more videos for healthy meal prep.